uh, hello dear viewers <clears throat> once again uh, welcome to my new lecture so in this lecture uh, we will discuss about the different antifungal agents and to know about the uh, fungi how these fungi cause infections in human beings and animals and my microorganisms and organisms uh, So first of all, uh, I'm very thankful uh, to Almighty Allah who gave me uh, the courage to present uh, my lectures to my viewers, to my students. Uh, you, God, Lord of Kingdom, you give the kingdom to worms wherever you please and strap the kingdom from the worms wherever you please, you honor for whom you please and bass whom you please. So uh, let's come uh, now. Come toward the topic. So the presentation topic is antifungal drugs. <clears throat> Look at here. These are the objectives. So I'm going to cover all these objectives. So what is fungi? Define antifungal drugs. Define most commonly used drug category that is used to prevent and treat fungal infection. Briefly discuss action and effects of antifungal drugs. List some of the most commonly used drugs for fungal infections and also discuss the nursing measures, patient education, which can be taken if the patient is using to treat and <clears throat> prefect infections. Nursing management related to antifungals. Oh, no. So uh, let's see here to know about the uh, fungi. So fungi is eukaryotic true nucleus. You can see here uh, and the diagram it is cell wall it has got the apparatus symptoms vacuum plasma membrane lipid body mitochondria and nucleus so this is clear but there is no chlorophyll present in the fungi but they have cell wall and it is the capability to reproduce spores so fungi is also produce elemental structure. The term mycosis, the repertory condition and with the fungi pause, the resistance variance of the human or animal body establish infection. <clears throat> now let's see here uh, types of fungi. Fungi can be uh, classified into different categories on the basis of types, on the basis of characteristics, and their causative agents, or you can say causative fungi. Yeast. So, yeast is uh, one of the type of fungi which can reproduce by buddings, uh, like Cryptococcus and Neoformans. And these species are these fungi cause meningitis, inflammation of the triplet layer of the brain. While the second one is <coughs> yeast-like fungi, so use like yeast-like fungi, that is the characteristics, which partly grow like yeast and partly as pediments, called hive. While the causative agent, that is candida albicons and as candida albicons are responsible to cause infections and the Vagina, so that is called vagina thrush and systemic candidiosis, as well as oral. While another form of fungi, another species of fungi, that is dimorphic fungi, which can grow as filaments or as yeast. Its causative agents are histoplasma and capsulatum. Histoplasma and capsulatum are responsible to cause various systemic infections. While another species, that is molds which are also called dermatophytes, and these dermatophytes have the tendency, they are filamentous fungi, which have filamentous and they can reproduce by forming spores formations. Causative agents <coughs> of these fungi, that is trichophyton species, while the second one is microsporum and epidermophyton species. And these species cause uh, various type of infections in the skin and nail like tenia carporis. Infections called tenia are in simple words, it's called ring one. Which is called by moles or dermatophytes. Uh, now, 
come to antifungal drugs. Antifungal drugs are those drugs, are those agents, are those medications which are also known as antimycotic medications. Antifungals, uh, they are used to treat mycosis or infection caused by the fungi. Fungi are different from bacteria. In sense of uh, that, their cell walls are made up of chitins. So the cell wall of fungi that is made up of chitins and various polysaccharides rendering this organism resistance to antibiotics. So there is an increased incidence of fungal infections, especially in immunocompromised patients, patients with adds acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So I would like to clear uh, the basic concepts that whenever a pair person uh, have uh, immunocompromised or the immune system is weak. So uh, there, the chances of fungal infections, they are more prominent, especially in case of AIDS or in case of any disease where immunosuppression occur. Uh, the target for antifungal agents is both the human and fungi. They are eukaryotic, so not much difference could be found. But the most important difference is the presence of cell walls, especially for bacteria or fungi. So that is not found in the humans. So that's why the cell wall that is not found in the humans. So that's why these drugs can target that particular species, especially while the other targets. So it can uh, inhibit the DNA. So inhibitor, these are the inhibitor of DNA synthesis while it also got disruption of the mitotic uh, spandles, while another target can interfere with the metabolism. So the most exploited difference is the nature steroids. Important component of the cell membrane for the proper function of cell membrane enzymes and ion transporter proteins. Uh, let's see here what are the targets for antifungal therapy. So why we are going to target that species, that fungi. Now let's suppose uh, this is fungi and you can see here that all the cell organelles they are present like mitochondria, cell wall, cell membrane, DNA. So actually these antifungal agents can target the cell membrane of this big fungi. And this fungi use principally ergosterol and steroid of cholesterols. And steroid of cholesterol, so ergosterols are steroid is the main principle components which is responsible for infections. So after targeting the cell membrane of this fungi, so uh, the growth and the production of ergosterols will be minimized. But here fungi use ergosterol instead of, instead of uh, cholesterols. Uh, while another mechanism is uh, it can also cause so there are some compounds which may selectively activated by fungi and arresting the DNA synthesis, so it can also target the uh, DNA. As we know that. Uh, uh, another thing uh, that is cell wall, so through with the help of antifungal therapy, we can target the cell wall of that particular species, that fungi, unlike mammalian cells, because fungi have the cell wall. <coughs> Now, what are the types of fungal infections? So, as we know that fungi cause various infections. So, the first one is superficial and the second one is deep infection. And superficial infections, it can affect the skin, mucous membranes. For example, tinea versiculus, while the second one is dermatophytes. And dermatophytes, fungi that affect the keratin layer of the skin, hair, nail. For example, tinea pedis ringworm infection, while the second, uh, another one is candidiasis. So, candidiasis is caused by candida, albicon, yeast like oral Prussian, vulvogenitis, and nail infection. So, uh, while the second one is deep infection, and deep infections, these fungi affect the internal organs like lungs, heart, brain leading to pneumonia as well as endocarditis as well as meningitis so these are the actually inflammation infections caused by the bacteria the fungi now come to a clinical classification of mycosis how it can be uh, clinically it can be categorized so the first one is cutaneous mycosis 
and cutaneous mycosis, these diseases are restricted to keratinized layers of the skin here in next. As we know that, that the concentration of the amount of keratins, they are in large extent, so they are exist, they are present in the skins and hair and nails. So these are the areas where more and more keratins, they are stored there. While the second one is subcutaneous mycosis, and in this case it involves the terms subcutaneous tissue or interventions such as debridements. While in systemic mycosis due to opportunistic pathogen, systemic mycosis due to opportunistic pathogen, so these are the infections of the patient with the immune deficiency uh, who would otherwise not be uh, affected. In systemic mycosis, it may be due to primary pathogen originate from in the lungs and may spread to many organ system. Uh, let's see here. So this is the first one is cutaneous and then subcutaneous and then uh, opportunistic and systemic. So you can see in the table. So in cutaneous superficial mycosis like tenia, pyracantidiosis, and dermatophytosis and subcutaneous. You can see here chromoblastomycosis, uh, mycosis, while the second one is for uh, sporotrichosis and uh, mycetoma. While in opportunistic asparagilosis, maybe occur candidiosis and peptococcus and eutricosis and zygomocosis. So you can see here all these things. So these are actually the infections which are caused by the, this particular species of fungi. Uh, and systemically, so you can see here blastomycosis, candidiasis, and aspergillosis, or histoplasmosis, crypto. So many and more species, so they are responsible for the variety of infections. Uh, inshallah, in my next lecture, so I will go in details uh, what are the factors that are the spread of the fungal disease. Okay, so. Wish you all the best and thank you so much for watching my lecture. So if you have any question regarding my lecture, so I'm already available for your services and you can uh, directly contact me through my email. Thank you.